All right, today we're checking out one of the coolest neighborhoods in Southwest Portland, South Burlingame. This neighborhood has a ton of charm. It is not a huge area, but it's conveniently located close to Lake Oswego, but also close to downtown Portland, really close to the river. You got I-5, you can probably hear it right now. We're gonna check it all out. Stay tuned to learn more. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from South Burlingame today one of the coolest neighborhoods in Southwest Portland. Now, admittedly, this is definitely one of my favorite neighborhoods for sure, so I might be a little bit biased here. But South Burlingame has really two primary attributes that I think a lot of people are really going to love. You have a ton of historical charm, so a ton of character, when you look at the homes in this neighborhood and also just the layout of the neighborhood as well, and also the convenience. So the location is really, really convenient for pretty much anything that you would need, pretty much anywhere that you would be working or commuting to when moving to Portland. So you are uh, really just up the hill into the West Hills from the river in Southwest Portland. Uh, you have I-5 going right through the neighborhood so you can get on I-5 super quickly. You can also get over to like Beaverton Hillsdale Highway, get out to Beaverton if you needed to get out to like, uh, you know, work at Nike or if you're getting all the way out to Hillsboro, whatever it may be. Uh, but you also have a ton of shopping, grocery stores, basically everything that you would need along Barber Boulevard and also in the surrounding neighborhoods and suburbs of South Burlingame as well. Now, if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here and you haven't already and you want to get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. So we're going to talk a little bit about the houses in this area. We're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of living in this area. I mean, there are a ton of benefits for sure, which I've already alluded to, uh, but there are some downsides as well. So let's just knock those off the list right away. So, you know, one thing is that this neighborhood is really pretty dense. So if you're looking for an area that has large lots and a lot more privacy and a little more room to breathe, this is not going to be it. I mean, this is an older neighborhood characterized, you know, by again, dense kind of suburban residential living. It's one of the oldest developments in Southwest Portland. You're really close to downtown Portland. So, you know, this is an area where, we, you know, just like when you look at some of the neighborhoods in Southeast and Northeast Portland and North Portland uh, and Northwest Portland as well, you know, some of the older Portland neighborhoods, uh, you know, everything is really built in pretty densely. I mean, there's been so much infill over time that this really kind of lives more like an urban residential neighborhood in a way. But Southwest Portland is a little more tucked away, a little more removed moved from the rest of Portland just by nature of the topography. I mean, again, you're up on the hill over here, so you're kind of up and over the hill from downtown Portland. So you have that natural separation here. Uh, another thing is this is a busy neighborhood. Now, not in the neighborhood itself, necessarily on the neighborhood streets, but you have Terwilliger running right through the middle of it. And Terwilliger is a really big thoroughfare you know, where people are going to be getting down uh, to Highway 43, to McAdam, people are gonna be getting over to I-5, to Barber Boulevard, people are going to be getting over to Boone's Ferry Road or to Taylor's Ferry. So the really right in the heart of Burlingame is a really, really busy intersection that especially during rush hour, I mean, it's it's constant traffic. So that is something you have to deal with if you're kind of getting in and out of the area, especially at busier times of day. You also have I-5, which you can probably hear uh, from where I'm standing at Fulton Park. And, you know, it's not a huge neighborhood here. So you probably have maybe like 30 square blocks, something like, so, you know, something like that. And so, you know, you're not that far removed anywhere in the neighborhood from I-5. Makes for a lot of convenience for sure. But again, I mean, it's, it's gonna be pretty loud and that's gonna be pretty constant, right? You know, whether it's a busy time of day or not. Another thing about South Burlingame, and when we look at older houses in particular, you know, the median 
uh, age of home or, or year built rather for homes in South Burlingame was 1959. So that's a benefit if you're looking for that historic charm, which you know I certainly think is a strong attribute of the area. I think it's gonna be pretty clear and something that a lot of people would take notice of checking out South Burlingame that, wow, you know, these are some really cool old homes, but that means these homes are probably going to be smaller on average. In fact, the median uh, square footage for homes in South Burlingame is just about 2,300 square feet. So that's not a, a small home by any means. Usually like a small starter home is closer to like 1,200 to 1,500, maybe 1,700 square feet. So 2,300 square feet, I mean, you can get a couple of living areas and you know, typically four bedrooms, smaller bedrooms on average. You'll have a lot of homes that don't have like a true primary or master bedroom with a bathroom or a big ensuite, you know, big master bath with double vanity and, and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, so there are some trade-offs buying older historic homes for sure. And I, you know, I think depending on what some people are looking for, that could be viewed as a negative. Okay, so now talking about some of the benefits of South Burlingame and living in South Burlingame. Uh, there are uh, a couple of green spaces here. You have Fulton Park where I'm standing right now, which is not really kind of right in the neighborhood. We're actually on the other side of I-5 here. Um, so you probably have to drive over here uh, to get here, but it's, at, it's technically in the neighborhood lines. And, you know, I used to play uh, t-ball games here as a kid. Uh, this was an old school that was opened in like 1915. But now it's a little community center. You can do art classes and uh, I think there's like, you know, basketball for kids and stuff like that there. You know, you got a, you got a playground here. So uh, Fulton Park is a good little spot. You also have Burlingame Park, uh, which is a really nice big park. There's a little uh, walking path around it. There's a, a playground, actually a couple little playground spots, a tennis court, and that's really right in the heart of the neighborhood where anybody in South Burlingame can walk there. So being a dense residential area, there's definitely green spaces reserved for parks and being able to get outside and walk around and everything. So South Burlingame is going to be a, a pretty small neighborhood when you look at other neighborhoods in Portland. There's about 1,500 people who live here. It's very distinct. I think it's a very tight-knit community overall, which I think most people are going to enjoy moving into a neighborhood. You really got a range in terms of age. Again, the median age, about 43. Uh, so you have young families, older folks, middle of the road, you know, everything in between. So you can really get it all in terms of the demographics here. I think. Aside from the neighborhood itself and again the character that you get which you know I'll be showing you as you're watching this video you know driving around and everything it's really going to be the location and not just the neighborhood itself but what's around you what you can get access to Southwest Portland itself doesn't have a lot of entertainment districts it doesn't have a ton of great restaurants like the rest of Portland does really a lot of I think a lot of people move to Southwest Portland or gravitate toward this area because it is a little bit more removed from the city and it's a little bit quieter aside from the you know the freeway roar in 24 7 right here but if you're in South Burlingame just to the south of you you can get to a neighborhood called Collins View which is another really cool old neighborhood but then you get to the Lewis and Clark campus really beautiful campus great spot to go walk around and then south of there you get into Lake Oswego and you get right into downtown Lake Oswego which is one of the coolest downtown suburban areas in all of the Portland metro area so if you live in South Burlingame you're downtown Lake Oswego in 10 minutes in between here and there, you can also get to Tryon Creek State Park, which is an enormous park with you know, a ton of uh, hiking trails and walking paths, and there's a little visitor center. So it's, it's a really cool spot in terms of being able to get out and enjoy nature, basically right there on your doorstep. East of here, you know, is going to be the river and then southeast Portland. So if you if you get down the hill, down to McAdam and Highway 43, you have a neighborhood called called John's Landing, uh, which is a really cool neighborhood. You have Willamette Park there, so you have a huge park right on the Willamette River. If you have a boat, you know, they ha they have a boat launch, uh, but it's a it's a good spot just to be able to walk around and actually see the water. If you get across the bridge from here, you get into Selwood. And Selwood is one of the coolest neighborhoods in all of Portland. Definitely has this feel of an entertainment district, a ton of great restaurants, some of the best restaurants in Portland, breweries and coffee shops, and you know, a ton of great shopping, boutiques. Uh, there's some antique stores, you know. So Selwood has a ton to offer. Now, if you get north of here, you get into a neighborhood called Hillsdale, which has some restaurants. You're still in Southwest Portland. You can get up into OHSU. 
That's another great spot to get out and go walk around. You get some really good views of the city up there. And then just north of there, you're in downtown Portland. So from South Burlingame, you're in downtown Portland in about 10 minutes as well. So again, downtown Lake Oswego, downtown Portland, super quick, super accessible. Now, if you get west of here, I mean, it's not gonna take you too long to get to Beaverton, to get to downtown Beaverton, or if you wanna get up to Cedar Mill, or if you work at Nike and get out to the Nike campus, uh, you know, even, uh, or out to any of the more industrial areas of Beaverton where you might be working. I mean, you're probably more like 15 minutes to the heart of Beaverton from where we are but still gonna be super convenient and accessible. You have Barber Boulevard that runs alongside South Burlingame as well. So that's where you're gonna have your Fred Meyer. And this is a cool old Fred Meyer. It still has the old Burlingame Fred Meyer sign. And you know, this is where you have more like fast food. You have a few more grocery stores, things like that. Barber isn't necessarily a strip of like entertainment, you know, where y you have all these great restaurants and everything, but you're gonna have your mechanics and your tire shops and things like that. Again, just right here on your doorstep. And then really just about five minutes from South Burlingame, you can get into Multnomah Village, which really is the heart of Southwest Portland. And this is a little entertainment district where you do get some great restaurants and, you know, really great community. And it's a great place to go out and hang out, spend an afternoon, get dinner, get drinks, whatever it may be. So in terms of real estate and home values, I mean, this is a small area and it's a pretty desirable area. So you don't see a ton of homes for sale all the time. It is an area that I think a lot of people gravitate towards. So there's typically gonna be some pretty good demand for homes that do go up for sale here. You know, the median sale price here is going to be more middle of the road when you look at all of Portland and comparable areas probably. But I think more of that has to do with the size and age of homes. So not everybody is necessarily looking for uh, an older home. Some people are, but not everybody is. And, you know, again, the median square footage is just about 2,300 square feet. So you can get a four, even five bedroom home here, but it's gonna be a little bit smaller. It's gonna be a little bit tighter. The bedrooms are gonna be a little bit smaller. You're not gonna have a ton of homes with that big open concept, you know, that a lot of people do like. So the median price per square foot is going to be probably a little bit higher than average, but the actual median sale price and the home values in South Burlingame, again, are, are still gonna be pretty attainable compared to similar areas in Portland. So if you look at niche.com, which I don't know, you can take some of the niche.com rankings with a grain of salt for sure. I mean, there's going to be some truth to it. They're looking at quantifiable metrics that do, I think, speak to quality of life and value and things like that. Bur South Burlingame is ranked number one for neighborhoods in the Portland area to buy a home. So you know, there's gonna be something to that. And that's not necessarily a surprise. It was a shock that it was number one, uh, but this is as good of area as any, at least. It's ranked the 10th best neighborhood to raise a family and it's ranked the 16th best neighborhood overall when you look at the Portland metro area. So, you know, I think South Burlingame is an area that has a ton going for it. Again, it's an area that I love, you know, so I'm a little bit biased here, but if you are interested in South Burlingame, learning more about this neighborhood or neighborhoods that are similar, if you wanna talk about your move to Portland, give me a call, send me a text, shoot me an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call. And we can talk about neighborhoods that might fit your needs and, and really suit what you're looking for and talk about your budget and timeline and maybe whether or not right now is a good time to buy or not. Either way, I would love to help with your move to the Portland metro area. And if this video is helpful, make sure to give us a thumbs up. That helps us out a lot. If you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we really appreciate you watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.